Thank you very much, Iveta. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today. It's an honor and a privilege to discuss with you a little bit uh, disease prevention and health promotion, how they contribute to achieving the sustainable development goals in Europe. It was already mentioned many times that non-communicable diseases are the key driver of mortality and morbidity in Europe. Right now they are responsible for around 90% of deaths and 85% of disability in Europe. But what is also interesting in, in this chart where we compare infectious diseases, NCDs and injuries over time, the share of NCDs in, in disease burden is actually increasing. So this means that our response to NCDs is not as fast as to other, other conditions. Uh, health is the key of sustainable development goals. We cannot achieve sustainable development if we don't um, achieve health. The societies cannot flourish and develop to the full potential. Here in this uh, regard, it is also very important the nutrition. Uh, he says here zero hunger, but I think in European context, this should be eliminate all forms of malnutrition including overweight and obesity. So this is just an example from the nutrition, how nutrition contributes to all other SDGs. And if you think uh, the same is true for health, uh, the same is true for many other things, SDGs are interlinked and that they affect each other uh, in numerous ways. We should also recall that we have the so-called uh, global monitoring framework for the non-communicable diseases where we um, have nine global targets, three of which are also sustainable development goal targets. Those are the premature mortality from NCDs, uh, the 10% reduction of alcohol consumption, and 30% reduction of tobacco smoke. So um, I will focus more on the coming slide on those, on those indicators. So, if you think about all the global commitments in the area of non-communicable diseases, um, they have been summarized here on one slide, so I will not go into details. But basically we have a number of UN commitments from 2011 over 2014 over 2018, political declarations. We have Health 2020, we have the Global and the European Action Plan for um, prevention and control of non-communicable diseases. We have the WHO Global Program of Work and Sustainable Development Agenda. And uh, they all drive and determine our components of national response to NCD prevention and control. We have a few key milestones. And one is 2017, which has already passed, is the four time bound commitments where the government has said we should do certain things by 2017. Second thing is that we have uh, the Global Program of Work of WHO and Member States until 2030. We have the nine voluntary targets of NCD until uh, 2025. And then we have the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. So all those things play somehow together and are aligned. So if we speak about premature mortality from NCDs, from four major NCDs. Those are cardiovascular diseases, cancers, diabetes, and respiratory disease. Are we on target as Europe? We are just right on it. So if you look at the line, this red line, this red line is the target. So we are just below it, but it's very, very questionable. And you see in the last few years, we are going slightly up. On the right hand side, we have the same data for, um, for high income countries and low and middle income countries in Europe. And you see the huge difference. It's almost twice higher the premature mortality rate in, Western, in, in, uh, in low and middle income countries. What is interesting that the countries, that high income countries are already today at this level. So just by bringing everybody to the average of high income countries, we will be able to achieve this goal um, today. So if you think a little bit about different geographical regions in Europe, we have the CIS countries, the former Soviet countries, we have the new EU member states, and we have 
the old EU member states. And here you have the probability of dying from four non-communicable diseases between ages 30 and 70, premature mortality. And what is interesting is to observe that this is almost a continuum. You can see that CIS countries nowadays are 50 years, five decades, behind EU 15 countries. So we need to, we cannot wait for 50 years for those levels to come down. We need to act much faster and we need to do much better. If you look at the EU 13 countries like Slovakia, they are now 25 years behind EU 15, EU 15 countries. And this is mainly driven by cardiovascular diseases. Cardiovascular diseases are the diseases that we are able to modify fast and that we are able to reduce fast. Cancer is also important, but cancer goes down at a much, much slower rate than cardiovascular diseases. What is also interesting to observe is that comes here with cardiovascular disease in the recent years, it seems to go down to a slow. So it looks like the, the levels are already very low and the room for improvement seems to be limited. This is again a very similar uh, slide just showing this by country. The bottom message here is that there is huge variation in mortality by country. and We have this excess male mortality. So just by reducing this excess premature mortality among males, we will be able to reduce by 50% uh, the inequities uh, between countries. And the same goes in a very similar way to cardiovascular diseases. So I would just like to emphasize again the importance of, of CVDs. If we speak about alcohol, the good news is that yes, we are on track to reach alcohol, 10% reduction, and it seems to be that we have already now reached the target. So you would say, mm -hmm, interesting, good, we don't need to do much, but first of all, it's only 10% reduction. It's a very moderate target that we have. And second, look at the, at the uh, sub-regions where we are achieving this target. We are basically achieving this target in CIS countries. The EU 13 countries are just on track, but the EU 15 countries are not at track at all. The alcohol consumption remains constant and there is no change at all. Again, age time, uh, if you look at the smoking, here the target is much more ambitious, 30% reduction. And here again, we are failing to achieve this target. We are above, above the line. Although not an SDG, it's very much related uh, formally, uh, not an SDG, overweight and obesity. Uh, it is very much related with nutrition and with uh, SDG goal two, which is actually end all forms of malnutrition. And here our target would be to halt the rise in overweight and obesity. And you see that we are failing miserably to achieve this goal. There is actually no single country in the world that's going to achieve this target if current uh, trends continue. So we need to change something urgently. Here are some data from our region, from the COSI Childhood Obesity Surveillance Initiative and from HBSC, where you see that the levels of overweight and obesity are very high also among very young children, six to nine in COSI, or among 11 to 15 years old in uh, HBSC, and that the trends are increasing very, very fast. So this would be somehow a scorecard for Europe if we are going to achieve the um, global monitoring framework targets. So for uh, pre premature mortality, we are still on track, but it's getting closer. To be very uh, unsure if we're going to, to achieve, we are failing big time on tobacco, we are failing big time on overweight and obesity. For many other things in yellow, we don't even have good data and we don't know what's actually going on. So what are the WHO recommend, recommendations? Where should we focus our efforts? WHO has developed so-called best buys. Uh, and they are listed here on the slide. 
those are the interventions that are effective and cost effective, especially in low and middle income countries. So in high income countries like most of the European countries like Slovakia, this is the bare minimum. We should do much more than just this. So basically this of those uh, 16, 10 of them are legislative actions and this emphasizes the importance of whole of the government approach to prevention and control of non-communicable diseases. This is about increasing prices, this is about reducing availability and so on. So it is clear that not only the ministries of health, not only healthcare providers, but whole governments and societies need to work here. Uh, we have the so-called progress monitoring indicators which have been agreed in 2000. 14, and where the governments have said we should do certain things by 2017 at the latest. And here, just a few slides that show that the governments have by far not done all the things that were agreed and that should be done. So, for example, if we look at the, um, here at the alcohol, we see that, uh, sorry, this is tobacco, we see that there is some progress in, in increasing tobacco taxes, but that's still around 20% of countries in Europe don't come even close to recommended levels of t taxation. We see a big uh, improvement, for example, in, in warning people about the dangers of tobacco smoke and so on. However, if we look at alcohol, we don't see much progress. The recommended actions are not implemented, like for example, uh, the regulations about uh, commercial uh, and public availability of alcohol, and so on and so on. I'll skip a few slides in the interest of time. So this was the regional picture, and now here you have the picture by country. Where is my country? and how many of those recommended best buys is my country actually implementing. And here you have on the slide a uh, ranking of, of the countries. What is interesting is to see that UK being the best country in Europe leading, even UK does not implement uh, more than one, one fourth of recommended action. So all governments and all countries have a lot of room, room for improvement. Here, uh, a few data for Slo Slovakia and, and, and Visegrad countries, just for your reference in detail. I'll skip. So coming to some of the innovations from WHO and coming to some of our uh, newer products that we have been doing recently, um, we have prepared a physical activity fact sheets for countries or with the countries where you can see what are the good practices and uh, what are uh, the recent development in, in the area of physical activity. We have uh, in the next two publications, we have done some recent uh, work on the composition of baby foods uh, where we have uh, scanned baby foods and we have seen that they are full with sugar, they are full with salt, they are full with fat and those are the food that have been marketed to children or to parents of the children as healthy, as health enhancing. We have uh, also, for example, here uh, the NCD investment cases where we work with governments and where we do an economic analysis. What are the interventions that would bring the best economic benefit? What, is, what are the cost of NCDs and what are the interventions that would bring the best uh, return of investment. And here, of course, traditionally preventive interventions like tobacco control, like salt reductions, are the interventions with the best um, return of investment. Uh, we are uh, trying to intensify our work here on breastfeeding and held a large conference recently in Moscow and have also produced the European status report on, on alcohol recently. One of the areas um, that I would like to mention is the digital marketing, especially of unhealthy products, especially to children 
and, and young adults. We have developed here a tool called Click that allows you to um, monitor and comprehend the landscape of, of digital marketing. Uh, we have a project called Feed Cities, where uh, we go out to the markets and fast food restaurants, outlets, sample foods and examine the content of uh, salt, trans fats and fats, sugar in the foods. And the uh, results are horrendous. In certain countries, one bowl of soup will give you more salt than the maximum recommended daily value. So the food environment around us needs to be monitored and needs to be changed. Uh, we are also doing a number of uh, alcohol po policy impact case studies. Here a recent example from Russia, where you have here in, in red line the alcohol consumption in Russia, and then a number of policies that are described in detail are introduced and the alcohol consumption in Russia have almost uh, decreased by half in the last 10 years. And you can see in blue here that this was accompanied at the same time with reversely proportional increase in life expectancy. We are doing similar studies in a number of European countries where you can in detail examine the, the associations and what are the policy actions. The last slide, uh, I think the novel tobacco products, uh, heated tobacco products, um, ends and so on, impose a huge threat on us. And this is an area which is not sufficiently regulated in many uh, countries at the moment. This is an area where there are very worrisome claims. And this is an area where I think we collectively need to uh, think how can we change the situation very fast. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention and would be happy to answer any questions you might have.